Praise God. Praise God. Can you all hear me? Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. To God be the glory, great things he has done, greater things he will do. We give God the glory for giving us the privilege to meet again today as we come to his feet to study his word under some the school preview. And um, as we all know, we're all teachers, we're all students learning at his feet. We will be um, um, dealing with lesson 13 and 14, lesson 13, meaning service and ministry, and lesson 14, combating falsehood and dark power. Mm. Very strong, powerful topics we are dealing with today. To God be the glory. But as we all know, before we start, we have to put everything at his feet. We have to put everything in God's hand because we have no power of our own. It is only God that can help us and guide us through. Therefore, I will sing this song first that say, we are here again. We are here again. Lord, we are here again. Holy Ghost, come and take control. Oh, yes, we are here again. We are here again. Lord, we are here again. Holy Ghost, come and take control. Therefore, Father, Lord, we are here again at your feet. We are here in your presence. We are here fellowshipping together in one love and in one accord. Father, Lord, we say thank you. We thank you, O oh Lord, for giving us the privilege to meet again today. We thank you for your love, for your sustenance, for your protection, for everything that you have given us to come before your presence this evening, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, we just say thank you. We just say thank you. We just say thank you. If we have 10,000 tongues, it's not enough, O oh Lord, to show our appreciation for what you are doing in our life, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We thank you for your wisdom in our life. We thank you for your knowledge. We thank you for your understanding, Father, Lord. It is you that gave it to us. Funny enough, we are talking about gifts today. And we are talking about workmanship. We are talking about our service to you, Lord. We are trying to know more in you as we are growing. And we thank you for this privilege. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, as we are say, as we are here, we cannot say we don't do things wrong. We cannot say we do not go amiss. Therefore, Father, Lord, we come before you, Lord, and ask for forgiveness. Everything thing that we have done, O oh Lord, that can be an obstacle, that can be a hindrance to all what we're going to do today to be acceptable in your Father, Lord, forgive us in Jesus' name. Anything that can stop your Holy Spirit taking control and being in our midst today, Father, Lord, forgive us in Jesus' name. Every act, every thought, every saying, every deed of us, O oh Lord, that can stand as an obstacle for you visiting us and talking to us and talking through your children, your servants that are, you are going to use today, Father Lord, forgive us in Jesus' name. We come, O oh Lord, and ask for your mercy. Have mercy upon us in Jesus' name. Let your mercy, let it, let it overrule every judgment in Jesus' name. Right now, Lord, we now commit everything to your hand. Take control in Jesus' name. Speak to us through your servant in Jesus name minister to us touch us let your name be glorified that at the end of this session we will give glory and honor to your name father lord we thank you because we believe we have faith and we know that our prayers has been answered father lord we say thank you in Jesus name we pray amen 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 in Jesus name over to the next um that's it over to you praise the lord we're going to be uh praising the name of the lord we're going to worship the name of the lord for all his goodness for all his mercies for all his favor 
over us, over our lives. Let's begin to worship the name of the Lord. It deserves all our praises. It deserves all our worship. It deserves all our adorations. Let's begin to exalt the name of the Lord. One will bless you, Lord, we exalt you. Worthy is your name. to now praise the name of the Lord for it deserves all our praises it deserves all our adorations let's begin to lift our hands of praises to worship the name of the Lord hallelujah Thank you. 
you are dear brother Tolu Sali for that wonderful praise may all our praises be acceptable in his sight in Jesus name now um, I will now call on our first teacher for the day who is going to take us through the first part of the lesson lesson 13 and the person of sister Jumoke Adekoya God bless you ma over to you thank you ma God bless you God bless you really good I welcome everyone so today's um, Sunday School Review, I welcome you to the presence of the Lord and ask the Holy Spirit take charge. God, we bless each and every one of us and we have one thing or the other, you know, to remember it for. Let us pray. Almighty everlasting King, we give you all the praise. We thank you because it pleases you for us to sit at your table and learn from you. Holy Spirit, come and take charge in Jesus' name. I release my intellect my tongue, my heart unto you, that you speak through me. 
to your people. You are the teacher. Father, we pray in the name of God, you teach us from above in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray in the name of God that our life will be a meaningful life. Our service to you and to your people will be a meaningful one in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you take preeminence of this, O Lord of heaven, in the name of Jesus, this meeting in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That at the end of it, we all give glory to your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. We are um we are in lesson 13. And from the previous lesson, we'll be talking about the spiritual gift and how God has given it to comfort and unite the church. And on this lesson 13, the unit two that we are in, it says, God give gift purposefully. That is, as children of God, we are giving gift for a purpose god doesn't just uh give his gift out without purpose we are giving the gift that okay how can we use that gift in a meaningful service to god and to each other as we go along may god help us you know in jesus name um we are in lesson 13 as i said meaningful service and ministry that's the topic and our memory scriptures says for the equipping of the saints, for the works of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And that is found in Ephesians 4.12. That is God, uh, the passage is telling us that, you know, that our gift is given for us to be equipped for, for the works of the ministry and to edify ourselves as the body of Christ. And I, I pray in the mighty name of just God, God will help each and every one of us. I want to use the time to just thank uh, the Sunday School Committee that give me the grace to be able to stand under this teaching today. We thank you for honoring Christ in my life. So as we go along, just go with me. Um, the memory scripture, as I said, it said that the gifts were given purposefully. And the reason for the gift is for us to be equipped to be empowered, to be strengthened in ministering to God with a, uh, a sincere heart in truth and in spirit and to be able to minister to each other. And um, on the picture on our book, we see the hand that is pulling um, someone up. It says, Jesus came to minister, to serve others. Uh, according to Mark 10, 45, your gift must serve others, lifting them up in significant way. That is, you know, even Christ himself, he came not to be served. He came that he may serve, he may serve us, and he, he gave his all. For he just came to minister, to minister to us, your gift is to serve others, lifting them up in a significant way. For even the Son of Man came, according to Mark 10, 45, to minister unto us, but, in, but in mini to minister, to give his life a ransom for many. And the Bible also says that you have been saved. Arise. Arise also. Don't live the life that we, we, we don't live the life that we wanted. We live the life of service. That's what Christ has shown us. That, you know, as we are called into the kingdom of God, we are called into a life of service, serving God with all our might, with all our strength, with all our ability, in every way possible. It's not only when we go to church that we are serving God. Even in our workplace, our means our, in our family, with our children, with our spouse, in everything that we do, we are serving God because God is, we are his children. We are representing him everywhere we go. And people that we see, they look at us and we must be different. We are, that we say that we are not of the world. We are from above. God sent us from above. And we must emulate the character of God in all that we do. And that is uh, part of our service to God as well. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. And um, I say that without us having clear understanding. If we don't have clear understanding of the purpose of why God give us a gift or ability, there is possibility that it can be misused. 
you can see, you know, people, because they have one gift or the other, you now they feel they are on top of the world, they want to charge. And they say, oh, come and sing. Oh, I will not come until they pay so, 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 so amount of money, or this, uh, they have to give me so, 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 and so, or I'm going to church to minister as a minister of God. If only one person is there, I don't want to. God give us that is on that must that we must serve that God with that gift. The Bible in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye have or, or have of God, and ye are not your own. We are not our own anymore when we give our lives to Christ. We must serve his purpose. We must serve his kingdom. We must serve him and minister to him first. When we minister to him, he continues to give us grace. The grace will continue when we have that love for God. And when we have love for God, we can't say the God. We show it in the way we minister to each other. When Christ came, he said, I give you another new, new commandment. The commandment he gives us is around it to two. Love God with all your might, with all your strength, with all your ability, and then love one another. The Bible says the gift of Christ are meant for the well-being of his church and the advancement of his kingdom. The purpose of that gift is to advance the kingdom of God. And then the two, the two, the two gifts. The primary gift purpose, the purpose of giving us that gift, I can say, is in two. Is it one to equip the saints for the ministry that is involving in sharing the gospel with uh, teach others wherever we are? People will ask us questions of the way we behave, we react because we are not supposed, as children of God, to react like the world is reacting, to be angry like they are angry. We have been set apart, separated for His glory. With that, they will have us and we are ministering. It's not only when we go to church or we handle mic that we are ministering. No, when we said, I'm for Christ, that means you represent Christ wherever we go. And wherever you go, you minister. You minister because Christ is watching. We are a steward of that gift. It is not our home. We are a steward and we know that in one day, we will, make, we will give account of how we use the gift when we are alive, serving him. I pray that God will help each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. So I go to um, having, as I said, that that's too key in is the purpose. The purpose of to have a meaningful service is for us to have that two a point that I said. So that when we integrate those two key points, then we are preparing ourselves, we are preparing the church for heaven, the way we develop and increase each other. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Let's go now to devotional Bible reading. Quickly, on Monday, I'll say I'll employ us, you know, to read it. Personally, but I'll just run through it now. Uh, on Monday, it says, minister to God through others. Through, minister to God through others. It says that, that his brotherly love must continue within us. We must minister first to each other. We are household of faith. And our ministration should be first to, to God and to each other. And uh, the, the, the passage, Hebrew 13.1, is imploring us that we should minister to each other, we should let brotherly love continue. As I said, that God said, we don't see him, but we see ourselves as brothers and sisters. And no one can say, oh, no, I will not work with that brother. Uh, I, I only want to know God. No. You, 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 we know God by knowing how we love each other. Because we are, we are, we are God to each other. The Bible says we are small God. When you, when you love brethren, it shows that you love God. Praise the Lord. Tuesday says, minister to God through strangers. That is hospitality to strangers. We see in the life of Abraham and in the life of Yeshua Maitumwa, we say that they meet uh, when uh, God wants to destroy uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. We see that uh, Abraham received three 
three visitors. And we say how he was hospitable uh, with, with them. And God revealed to him what he wanted to do. And also the funeral woman he was facing challenge when a uh, prophet Elijah met him and said, go and prepare something for me. Um, with, uh, he said, he doesn't have anything. He said, okay, the little that you have, first of all, prepare uh, for me and then to to yourself and your that oh, oh, the the um uh, the oil will not dry and the flour will not dry. We see that from doing that hospitable, being hospitable to stranger, sometimes we meet the angel, we meet God, and solution comes. So God wants us to, you know, ministers to stranger, ministers to God through prisoners. Through uh, some people have been um mistreated we we'll see uh that in the life of paul and silas when they are put in prison for not doing anything wrong or for preaching the gospel sometimes also you know we i know that in our church there are uh some some of us that went go to the prison to minister to them either they did wrong or not we are all under uh we have done something wrong so we can't judge them but we should minister to them to show the love of christ that Christ has died for them. So God wants us to do that as well, to minister to people that are facing adversity as in one body. The Bible says we are one body. When one body, one, one part of us is going through something, we should uh, uh, grow through it with them. When they are happy, we should be happy with them. That is, you know, we are one body. As the body has different parts. Also, as Christian, we are of different parts. God will help us in Jesus' name. On Thursday, it says, minister to God through our spouse. In our homes as well, as husband and wife, we are ministering to God because we are uh, both children of God. And then we must watch the Bible says in uh, that um, Hebrew 13, 4, it says, Mary is honorable in her and the bed on the fire, but the homemongers and her daughter God will judge. That is anything that we do, we know that there is a reward. As I said, there's a reward for everything that we do after we have we have become a believer and trusting God. We must let the fear of God be the underlining thing that goes with us everywhere that we go and in every behavior and attitude that we present. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. On Friday, send ministers to God with sincere hearts. Um, uh, the Bible in Isaiah 57, 58, 7 says, to give thy bread to the hungry, to bring the poor that are cast out into your house, to cover the naked, uh, naked, and to be compassionate. God wants us to be compassionate and kind to people. Sometimes that is sometimes what brings other people to Christ, our compassion. We see that during the time that Christ was here, he said that he will look at the people and will be compassionate towards this, them. And when he sees their burdens, he said he will, he will, he will heal them. You know, when even the uh, uh, the disciples are saying that, send them away. They have been tiring for three days. There's no food to, he said, let them sit down. Give them something. You know, our God is compassionate and he wants us also to have that character as Christian, to be kind, to be compassionate, to see what we go through and the bodies and to reach out as love. And that even can be used to draw others to Christ. I pray God will help us in, in Jesus' name. And the last one on Saturday said, ministers to God with compassion. Min uh, ministers to God with compassion. In James 1, 20, says, a poor religion on the fire before God, visiting the fatherless and the widow in their, their affliction. You know, we know that there is a lot of challenges that people go through. And even as we children of God, there are many challenges. We may see ourselves on Sunday. We are having powder in our face. Everything is going jolly, jolly. But you don't know deep down what that person is going through. And as we minister with compassion with one another in the fear of God, God will reach out to that brother and sister. And you feel like, oh, when I come to church, I'm always happy because I will see other people. You know, when I see people coming in, I know that every one of us is going through something. But for the fact that I see you, you are laughing, I'm, I'm also happy. I'm being encouraged. So by doing ministry to each other, we encourage each other. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. So I'm going to devotional thoughts. Devotional thoughts. The, devotional thought, the uh, first one says, the knowledge of God is both, the knowledge of God as both the owner and the giver of, of all, 
should help us to acknowledge and appreciate his deed by sharing with one another. Yeah. You know, we know that God is the owner, the owner of everything that we have. Is the owner of the gift that we have. Is the is the owner of even ourselves. Is the one that purchased us with his precious blood. He gave us everything. He gave us everything, so we must acknowledge him, appreciate him for the deed by sharing our love, appreciating God, and sharing our love with others, being kind, knowing that we are still worthy of that gift. God, God's gift, we will account for it one day. How did we deal with each other? How did we, how did you use the gift, and uh, the gift that God has given you? You know, that we don't use it to, you know, to abuse each other or to be proud. You know, I'm the one that, you know, if I'm not there, Ah, if you not uh, that service will not be, will not be, you know, will not, will not go well. Um, you know, we should not have that because every gift that we are able to give, God is the one that enables, empowered, in the, in the is the one that give all. So all that we want to give is for referencing, to reference Him, and to reference each other, to to to, to help each other, to love each other. I pray that God will help us. The second devotional to say the purpose of being gifted is not for a personal gain, but to serve and to strengthen the church. The church of God needs strength. As the Bible says, even in um, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9, it said, Having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he has purpose in himself. God has purpose in himself, and he has shown it to us, his purpose. So everything is for his glory. I pray that God will take glory in all that we do in our lives in Jesus' name. I, um, the aim and objective of the topics is aim to show how service and ministry can be meaningful. How our service to God and to man can be meaningful. And the objective says, describe service and ministry and explain how our ministry and service can be used, useful to God and man. And I pray that each and every time that we go before God, our service and ministry will be meaningful in Jesus' name. So the um, lesson outline is divided into two, our service to God and our service to one another our service to God and our service to one another in the lesson exposition said our service to God and I will read Ephesians 2 10 Ephesians 2 10 reads our service to God for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them that is as I said we must serve him with all our gift, knowing that he is the giver of every gift. God give us all those gifts because of what he has planned from the foundation of the world, that we are brought to for good works. We are created to work for God, for his pleasure, for his greatness, and in it, we also enjoy our bless. And I pray that as we serve God, he will continue to give us abundant grace to stand before him, with our whole heart, serving him and serving each other. In Jesus' name. God was standing by. Let's, the, um, uh, the other say, when we are serving God and we are serving each other, we should imagine, we should imagine that God is standing and looking at me. When we have that mind that God is standing by, because it's a spirit, we can't see him, but he sees everything that we do. So we should have that imagination and standing and say, God is watching me and doing watching me live and direct as we use a video and then we go and watch it. How did I, did, did I did well? Did I say things right? That is also how God sees us and watches us even in our innermost being. Some, some, someone may, may have a, a wrong motive, but sister of God, but God wants us to have a right motive. A right motive in our services um, is service to God. Is my service to God? Is it acceptable to God? We may say our service is acceptable. Man will say, oh, you did well. But until God mark our work, 
We can't say, oh, I did well. We all continue to ask for God's grace that will continue to help us to serve him in truth and in spirit in Jesus' name. We must serve him with our gift. Our service, our unique gift should be used as God, as if God was standing, as I said. It is, it is, it is God who will reward us. It is God, it's no man. So to him alone should our service be. Is him alone that we, uh, our service is the one that will mark our work. We must use those gifts to please him immediately and ultimately. You know, he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. When we seek him, when we serve him, he will reward us. The Bible says he doesn't call the son of Jacob to serve him in vain. As we are coming to him with a, a right heart, he also, any situation, any challenge that we may be facing, he will intervene on our behalf. And that is why every time we should be thanking him. He said in Christ, the only thing he requires from us is to be glorifying him because the battle is already won. All the one that we see is not, is finished, is a finished work. I pray that that finished work will be experiences in our lives in a daily basis in Jesus' name. He said for our service to be meaningful, for our service to be meaningful before God, we must serve with God's mind in his presence and according to his purpose. We got power to his people. That is, as I said, that God desire for us to serve him with all our might. It's not something that we, we, we have to be forced to come and serve God or we'll be looking at, oh, pastor didn't come, so that pastor didn't see me. No, we're not doing it. But pastor, it is God that knows the intent and intention of our heart. And we should let our heart be connected to him all the time that we come before him in our service. Because when we serve him, he said, he increase the grace we receive. He increase our grace in him. We are to be transformed, to become what he wanted us to become. Bible says, when we are saved, we no longer, we no longer serve our own self. I want to be this, I want to be that. Even though we have that. But God, we are now a servant. He said to him that you obey. You are servant to him. Because we obey Christ, we are a servant to him. So anything, everything that he, he wanted us, he ordained us, that he has ordained us from the foundation of the world, of the world to be a partaker of good works. So as we partake in that good work, we continue to increase our grace in Jesus' name. He continue to transform us according to Romans 12.1. He continue to transform us and help us to grow more and more in Jesus' name. And the last one I will say concerning this, oh, we cannot sit on the fence. We cannot say, oh, I'm not going to use my gift. We see that the uh, the um, parable of the talent, he gave one one according to the ability. He gave one two, he gave one five, and we see that the one that uses a, a, a keep is that talent. You know, it was taken from him and giving it to the one that asked him. So every, everything that God gave us, he wants us to use it. We can't sit on the fence. If we fail to serve God with all the gift that He has given us, we have to say we will serve another God. We will serve another God. And Jesus Christ has shown us, He has shown us that He has is a server, is a servant God. You know, He show an example that He served His own disciples. He washed their feet. He served them in every way to the extent of dying for us. So also we cannot hold on to our life and say, "Oh, I will not serve you. I'm shy." No, is the is the one that will empower us. To use the gift as we release ourselves to Him, you know we are we are made for His pleasure. So our gift must minister to Him first. Our our life is to serve Him. We are brought with a priceless blood, and I pray as we serve Him, our service will be accepted in His sight in Jesus' name. I quickly go to the uh, next one. So one another, our service to one another, and um, Peter. 410 says, as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as God's steward of the manifolds of the grace of God. Say, as we have received, well, as I said, in the talent of or, or, or the talent uh, a parable, we have all received. Each one of us 
as soon as you become a child of God, we are given a gift. We are given a gift. So either to cancel someone, to impart wisdom, you know, in diverse ways. We are given a gift. Administration, you know, teaching in every area that God has, you know, give us that ability. He knows us. And he knows what he has called us to be. If we have not discovered our gift, you know, we should pray to God to discover it. And when we discover it, to use it so that we can profit from it. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. The spiritual gift are God enabled. He's the one that enabled it. He's the one that empower. We see in the life of Peter, when he was being timid and shy, as soon as he received that gift, he was filled with power and boldness. Power and boldness to serve. Power and boldness to preach the gospel. And we see the miraculous that happen. Also, ourselves as well. Have we, have we been given the, uh, to, to, to encourage other people? To speak a word or two to, to, to the life of a, a, each one of us that are going through one thing or the other? You know, a service in every way, in any little way. Even in, 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 in just smiling to each other is an encouragement. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. As we, uh, 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 as we serve one another with a gift, it is not an optional thing. We must, it is a must. If we really love God, we must demonstrate this by our love for God and for one another. You know, if you haven't discovered, as, as I said, identify your ministry along the line of that gift to serve others and to minister to them. Paul called our attention to those who think, oh, they can be, they, they can use their gift selfishly. It is not your gift. It is the gift of the Holy Spirit and it cannot be used selfishly. And to those who think, oh, I didn't have any gift. We all have gifts according to Peter in Peter 14. So that's far that every believer has gift and should be should be used for the benefit of all. Your gift is to be used for the benefit of all. Your gift is for the church. Your gift is for God and to be used for God's purpose. I pray that God will enable each and every one of us and grant us grace. Jesus showed us an example that we must use our gift to serve one another in him. How can the master be serving the disciple? washing their feet, comforting them, encouraging them. You know, God has called you and me. Has placed you where you are now. Has placed you in the position you are now. You know, to serve him faithfully with our gift in building the church and to draw other people to Christ. I pray that God will help us and enable us in Jesus' name. Um, as I round up, and the lesson derived, we are designed to serve God according to his purpose. Any other thing than God's purpose leads to unfulfilled and disastrous living. The best way to fulfill your calling and please God who saved you is to serve others faithfully with his gift in Jesus' name. I pray that God will enable us. He will help us to serve him and to serve others in Jesus' name. Almighty everlasting King, we give you praise. We thank you, O Lord of heaven, in the name of Jesus, that you are giving us the grace today in the mighty name of God to learn at your table. Lord, we pray that every gift you are giving unto us, O Lord of heaven, that shall be for your glory. And we use it, O Lord of heaven, for your, for your people and for you, O Lord, in Jesus' name. That at the end of the day, O Lord, you will reward us for our stewardship in Jesus' name. Give us the right mind. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my dear sister, Jumokere Koya, for that meaningful and powerful teaching. May all your service to God Almighty not be in vain in Jesus' name. May it, may it be a fruitful service in Jesus' name. I will now hand over to our next teacher for the day, and that's in the person of my dear sister, Evangelist Yesunde Ajala. Over to you, ma. God bless you. Sorry, bear with me uh, while I try to get this to work. Um, excellent. Let's pray. 
Father, in Jesus' name, our Lord and our God, we give you all the honor, all the adoration. We exalt you. Father, Lord, we thank you for the spiritual gifts and power that you daily assure us that you've given unto us. Father, Lord, I pray that they continue to manifest in each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Lord, right now, I'm here to deliver your message. Not my words, but your words. Father, Lord, speak through me. Minister to me, minister to all of us, Lord Almighty. Lord, I pray that we don't gather here just to listen for the sake of listening. That our gathering today will not just so that I'm counted that I was at Sunday school teaching. But I pray, Lord Almighty, that you minister to each and every one of us. And the lessons that we've gained from the first speaker and from myself will be to your glory. Father, Lord, open my mouth, put your words in my mouth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, we thank God for the first speaker and the lovely teaching that we've had. And like she said, so throughout this year, we know that we've been speaking about the spiritual power and the gifts that God has given to us. We've spoken about so many elements of it. We've spoken about it being for the edification, the maturing, for witnessing, for comforting, like our sister said, and for meaningful service. She's told us it's for us to service, to, to serve and to strengthen the church. Meaningful service in the ministry. Now, we keep on talking about the things we get from the gifts that God has given to us. But today, the, I mean, at this moment, we want to talk about how we use those gifts to combat falsehood and dark powers. Brethren, the church of God faces threats from darkness. Satan, the chief of dark powers, he, he launches his assault every day. But we thank God that he has given us power. Do we understand we have the power? Do we understand we have the gifts? And a reminder from the first lesson, spiritual power, our ability, divine ability to act in such a way that brings positive change. So whether it's falsehood and dark powers, how can we act to bring positive change? And then we said about spiritual gifts, special ability God gives to believers for service in the ministry, manifested in different ways of service. How can we use those gifts, those special abilities that is given to you and me to combat falsehood and dark powers? I'll be honest and say that when I first of all saw this topic, Dark powers, falsehood, ha. Huh? I'm thinking dark powers. <laughs> How am I going to deal with this topic? But I thank God for his grace, and I pray that God speaks through me today in Jesus' name. Amen. So what is expected of us at the end of today? The expectation, if the slide changes, excellent, is that um, the, the, the lesson is to show that exercising spiritual powers and Give some power, falsehood, uh, falsehood, and dark powers can be defeated. And at the end of this lesson, by the grace of God, we would have discussed the meaning of falsehood and dark powers. We'll be able to identify the operations of falsehood and dark powers. And we'll have an indication of how, an understanding of how we can combat falsehood and dark powers using God's giving powers that he has given to us, using God giving gifts, spiritual gifts and power that he has given to us, how we can combat falsehood. Let's remind ourselves the, the beginning of this falsehood, this um, dark powers and falsehood. So in Genesis, after the eating of the apple and Satan's deceit, God, it's God said, and I'll put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Satan knows he's defeated. Satan knows he cannot overcome God. 
and therefore is looking always to devour. Who to devour? The question is, will you leave yourself? Will I leave myself? And some of his approaches to this is falsehood. Some are dark powers. Sometimes they're subtle and we don't know that they've creeped into our midst. Are we aware when this falsehood keep, creeps into our midst? But we have that power. Jesus has overcome sin, he's overcome devil and the world. Therefore, Satan cannot succeed. When we go to Romans 16, I'll start from 17. It says, now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learned and avoid them. Avoid them, those who cause division. For those who are, for those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by smooth words and flattering speeches, they save the hearts of the simple. So if you look at that verse 18, you will see that that has crept into the world, into the church. Those who are looking out for their own belly with smooth words, flattering speeches, they save the hearts of the simple. Now it goes on in verse 19, the second part it says, but I want you to be wise in what is good and simply consigning evil. And the verse 20 says, and the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of God of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, amen. So yes, there is Satan in our midst, in the church, all around us, looking for who to devour, using falsehood, losing dark powers, operating smooth like a smooth, smooth operator so that we don't know what he is doing or we are not conscious of what he's doing. Amen. I pray that God helps us that we do not fall a, a victim of Satan and his falsehood. Now let's look at some examples of this in the Bible and see how they relate to us today. Amen. We all remember the story of... Um, Okay, the this, this story of Ananias and Sapphira, and Sapphira, pardon me if I don't pronounce it well, willingly, the Christians, they yeah. agreed in Acts 4. Yes, me. Yeah. They agreed that all the believers would bring things to the house of God so that those who didn't have will have. All the believers were one in one heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possession was their own, but they shared everything they had. They sold lands, they sold things and brought it to the house of God. And that was the expectation. That was the agreed, willing agreement of all. But Ananias and Sapphira, what did they do? They sold their piece of land, but they didn't bring all the possession. A certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold possession and he kept back part of the proceeds. His wife also being aware of it and brought a certain part. Now, they didn't believe anybody knew and they would get away with it. But Peter knew. Who revealed it to Peter? the Holy Spirit. Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained with you, was it not your own? Peter said, you have not lied to man, but to God. Peter had the gift, the discerning spirit, and he discerned what was going on. And he didn't just confront Ananias, he confronted his wife as well. The end was that they died. The boats were died. They fell down and they died. So in the world today, Ananias and Sapphira were living a false life. They were trying to pretend that they were good. Oh, they, let's assume that they were billionaires. 
they brought two million. People have said, oh, they were rich, they brought this. But actually they had 10 million. The other 8 million is in their pocket. You feel you're a deceiving man, but no, they deceived God. Thankfully, Peter had the discerning spirit. He had boldness. He had courage. Because it's possible that falsehood is in the church today. But nobody is bold enough to stand up and rebook lying and cheating. Other things, other works of the flesh could be in the church. But are we bold enough to come back to them? These are the vices of Satan, remember? Everything that is not of God, every work of the flesh are the vices of Satan to devour us. Are we able to combat it? Peter did with the discerning spirit. I pray God helps us as well. Let's look at another one. Let's look at um, by Jesus, also known as the Sosra Elimath, a false prophet. <clears throat> now, we had the proconsul, who was a very intelligent man and wanted to know more about Christ. He was eager. He saw Saul and Barnabas. But Elimas wouldn't want him to speak. <coughs> Excuse me. Elimas wouldn't want him to speak. Why? Because he knew he would be sourced out. He would be found out. But Saul was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he spoke confidently. And he rebuked the sorcerer. He rebuked him. He told him that he will be blind. He cursed him. And the cause stood. And when the proconsul saw that, what did he do? He believed. He believed. Elimas the sorcerer was trying to be like, yes, he was a good person. He could help. But he was happy with dark powers, not with the power of God. We need to understand that we need God's power to be able to combat Satan. Because Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. He goes around as if he's the real person. The, the first prophet was going around as if he was a prophet, whereas he wasn't a prophet. The memory scripture today, 2 Peter 1, verse 3, as said, says to us, his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. We are with his power. The Bible tells us that Satan goes around like an angel of light. God has told us in his word. So we know that. The scripture, he has given us divine power. Saul here was able to withstand with the power of God, with the Holy Spirit walking through him. Are you and I able to withstand? Are we, able to, are we able to allow the power of God to walk through us? Or we walk away, ah, look, those people, I know them all. I know although what he's saying is false and he's presenting himself like he's a child of God, but I don't want trouble. Therefore, I walk away. He says he hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. If we don't stand up, if we don't combat, then Satan will wreak havoc in our church. False prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. What can we do about it? I pray God helps us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Still moving on, dark powers in the house of God. We see also in Acts 16, we see Paul and Silas going around and we see this slave girl, slave girl who was a fortune teller making business for her master. And then she actually went after them. Oh, these men are the servants of the most high God. But I went to sometimes, some ministers find people hailing them. They don't wonder the source of that hailing because they are interested in themselves. They're interested in their positional advantage. 
They're interested in their personal enrichment. That wasn't the case for Paul and Silas. They knew the girl was not of God. And they were annoyed and they commanded the spirit in her to come out in the name that is above all name, in the name of Jesus Christ. But what happened? When a master saw that their hope of profit was gone, because the spirit that was controlling her had been removed by Paul and Silas, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them to the marketplace. Guess what? They took them to court. They took them to jail. Well, I think my sister mentioned it earlier on about Paul and Silas. But what did God do in there? Paul and Silas were in prison and they were praying and singing. They were praying and singing. Oh, is it to put us in jail for the sake of our master? That's fine. We will pray. We will sing. They prayed. They sang. The Holy Ghost came down. A earthquake, earthquake happened. The prison was shaken. The doors were open. And everyone's chain was losing. God still witnessed through them. And not only did God witness through them, the jailer became saved. And I give kudos to Paul and Silas. When even the magistrate said they should go, they were like, uh-uh, if it was me and you, we'll carry our bag and quickly go. We'll go back to where we're coming from. Uh, I can't evangelize in that place again, you know. It's too tough. It takes the grace. It takes the power. It takes the gifting of God for Paul and Silas to see where I say, ah, uh -huh. openly you sent us to prison. Now you want us to go away secretly. No, we're not doing that. They refused to depart secretly. The magistrates, therefore, had to plead with them for them to leave. Boldness. Power to pray. Power to praise, even in the midst of challenges. They are gifts from God. I pray God will uphold and strengthen each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a tax. We have to unmask falsehood in our midst. We cannot be ignorant of Satan's advice. First John 4 verse 1 says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit, whether they are of God. The fact that the slave girl was praising and hailing them doesn't mean she had the spirit of God in her. Our head should not be swollen because of that and therefore say, yeah, I'm on the right path. Check. Ask for the discerning spirit. Satan transforms himself to an angel of light, like we said. A lot of ministers, if Paul and Silas were for positional advantage, for personal enrichment, guess what? They would have allowed the girl to continue hailing them. But they rebuked her. Christianity is not a means for personal enrichment. It's for populating the kingdom of God. It's not for position of leadership or taking advantage of others. It's for caring about what God wants. Not being a man pleaser, but a God pleaser. Falsehood is chief among the challenges that we face today. But the Bible tells us why Satan wants to put some falsehood in our midst. Cheating. Lying. It tells us in 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in faith knowing that the same sufferings were experienced by your brothers in the world. I pray that God helps us, that we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. I pray that we are watchful of false prophets 
deceitful workers, transforming themselves into angels of light. There is help at hand <coughs> in the Holy Spirit. Are we speaking to God? <coughs> Are we speaking to God? Are we listening to God? May God help us in Jesus' name. Unmasking falsehood. There's lots of heretical teachings out there. Adulterated word. People bringing up fresh revelation that is not in the scripture. Brethren, nothing can as heresies like the word of God. The Bible tells us, study to show yourself an approved worker, rightly dividing the word of God. Be like the Bereans, no matter what they are told, they go back and search the scriptures themselves. Combating falsehood and dark powers. You can combat falsehood with the word of God. Some have departed the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons and speaking lies. Are we standing firm? Are we standing firm? Remember, God's power is not for selfish desires. It is for victorious Christian living to glorify him. So you and I have a job to do in unmasking falsehood and dark powers. We have at our hand we have the Holy Spirit, we have God's word, we have his power and his gifting. We see how Paul, Peter, Silas, how, yeah, Peter, Silas, Barnabas, how they all use this power. How are you using the gifting and the power that God has given unto you? I pray that God helps us, that we are able to stand firm and we are able as a church to detect and confront satanic lies that he brings into our midst, willing to break the church of God. We have to sharpen ourselves with the Holy Spirit. God has given us his word that the God of peace will crush Satan under our feet. I pray that you and I listen to the Spirit when the Spirit speaks to us. Let us see the scenario where an evangelist was prompted by the Holy Spirit to check under the table where he sat with the counselee, he discovered a ring in the counselee's bag, big toe, leading to the confession that the man was an herbalist with dark powers. After his willingness to be saved, a prayer team was sent to destroy the shrine and he was set free. This incident highlights the importance of listening to the Holy Spirit. And that is the core point for you and I, listening to the Holy Spirit. Our forefathers listened. Are we listening? It's a gift to listen. It's a gift to be able to discern because God could be speaking to us and we're not listening. The exercise of the gift of deliverance by Paul on a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination shows that he was listening. You and I need to listen. And I pray that God will grant us that grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Shaming the powers of darkness. That was, like I said earlier on, that was how Peter was able to shame. That was how Saul was able with, with boldness to, 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 to talk confidently to the sorcerer. And the slave girl, even Elijah in the Old Testament, he was able to withstand Baal and the prophets. We aren't ignorant. Brethren, don't be ignorant. Like I said earlier on, we wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principality, against powers, against rulers, and the darkness of the age, against the spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places. But God... The name above all names. God, our Savior, he has given us all power above hearts, above all, to trample 
over principalities and power, and they shall by no means hurt us. But are we strong in faith enough to take on? Having the same principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them. God works wonders. He worked through the forefathers. He can work through us. But are we standing firm? Do we have the grace? Do we have the courage? When God is speaking to us, are we too scared? Combating falsehood and dark powers. Rulers, principalities. I pray God helps you and I to be able to start confidently, to be able to stand boldly. Peter could look at Ananias and Sapphira and say, these people are big men in the church. Ah, Look, the two million they gave to us is enough. Let's just take it. But no, the gifting of the Holy Spirit wouldn't let them do that. The words, why are you, you think you're lying to me? You're not lying to me, you're lying to God. Paul and Silas, they could have taken the honor, the, the, the name calling the girl, slave girl was giving them and saying, oh, these are like big men. They are this, they are that. Because it would make them feel important. But they said no. So, when he wanted to speak to the proconsul, he confidently did it. Because you know the other person was a false prophet. Are we able to stand? I pray God helps you and I. Brethren, we have a tax to shame the dark powers by being ready to exercise our God-given power and gifts, spiritual ones. Preaching and teaching sound doctrine must be our priority. Teaching and preaching sound doctrine must be our priority. Prepare to rebook any appearance of evil, no indulgence. We cannot cooperate with the devil. And we must be aware, we are aware, we know. We have to submit to the Holy Spirit, spend time in prayer. Paul and Silas did it and it worked for them. Listen to God's prompts. He says he has given us authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt us. Luke 10, verse 19. I pray that we take the boldness to do this, to hold on to his word and not walk in sin, that we are not of the devil, that we are children of the living God. Amen. We have total victory in Jesus' name. We have total victory over Satan. We have to start victory over falsehood. We gain power over our enemy because God has given us that power. We gain power through Jesus Christ and his death and his resurrection. Like we've been saying all along, the Holy Spirit is available. And the Holy Spirit will give us victory to Jesus. And no power. Christ overcame death. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, our, our faith. I pray that you and I will be able to stand firm in this. Lessons learned. Manifest, manifesting the gift of the Holy Spirit helps to discern the twat lies coming from the pits of hell. Darkness can never prevail against light. It's very impossible. I say it's impossible. Light and darkness, if I switch off my light now, Darkness will come in. Darkness Amen. will not be our portion. We can stand in the light of God. We have Amen. total victory over devil's power. Christ's power is much less. Amen. Christ's power is much less. Amen. And in conclusion, the Bible tells us, yes, yeah, like I read earlier on, behold, I have, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this. Amen. And the spirit, amen. amen. And God's power will continue to work in you and I. In Jesus' mighty name, 
we have prayed. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Thank you, Ma. Thank you so much for that powerful message. May the Lord continue to fill you with his power, his might, his confidence, and his boldness to continue to teach his work and to continue to serve him with his gifts that will combat all the kingdom of darkness in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, my God bless you in Jesus' name. Now, it's time for questions and answers. If we've got any um, questions and answers to throw to our two teachers that has taught us today or that we can share together, this is the time. So um, I'll hand over back to um, our dear sister Dekoya and uh, Evangelist Ajala to deal with the questions and answers. Um, before we ask um, any questions, um, I think we've got just 25 minutes for questions and answers. There is a question on the chat here um, that says, how can the gifts be used self selfishly. How can gifts be used selfishly? I think that question might be for Sister Adekoya, if I'm right. Over to you. Man. It's for all of us to answer it. Yeah, yeah I know, but because yeah, because you're, you're the one who taught on that particular area. That was why I mentioned your name. So it's for all of us to answer anyway, but um, over to you to anchor it. God bless you. So if anyone is ready to answer that, yes, um, we've got um sister uh, evangelist Obisheson. So she's raising up thank her hand to you, ma. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. And thank you if I could use uh the phrase of my darling sister Jala. Kudos to you two teachers of tonight. God bless you. Um, the way people can use their gift selfishly is selfishness is selfishness. Some people, although it's quite different, it's quite difficult to, I'm thinking about it now. It might be able to be difficult to explain how people can use this gift of God. But if, yeah, I think they can use it selfishly. If you are good at something, because whatever we have, whatever gift and talent we have is from God. And as we have learned from the first teacher, it's meant to edify the church, to build the church, to support each other. But for instance, if someone is good, like she rightly said, even smiling at people, smiling at people, it goes a long way. But it can, people can use it selfishly. When the gifts you, you have, you just pick and choose who you allow to benefit from your gift. Some people... Like some people said, um, what is it again? Remember when uh, God sent Noah to Nineveh and he wasn't happy. People can use it. People can, can I pray the spirit of the devil will not use us. People can in their heart say, oh, I'm not going to preach to this person. It better go to hell. You know, people can do it when they are intentionally picking and choosing who they let benefit and we always need to remember that whatever gift we have got is being given from we have it's been given from god so we should use it for anyone for for our friends for whoever is not our friends for jews for gentiles for unbelievers we shouldn't pick and choose that oh this is what this person i'm going to be good to or this is a, this person i'm going to preach to or in whatever in whichever gift we have got, may God help us in Jesus' name so that everybody will be able to benefit from the gift that God Almighty has bestowed upon us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ma. Thank you so much, Ma. Any other addition to that question? Answers? Can I, can I chip in? Yes, Ma. Go ahead. Um... Well, the gifts that God give us can be um, selfishly used by, let's say, for example, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a chorister, I was sing, and I was invited to the Church of God to come and minister, and then to tell, to tell them that, oh, until I go, 
if 5,000 is not deposited in my account, then I will not be able to go because, you know, I'm bringing my crew and it cost us this, cost us that to come in. And in, in case if we come in and then they didn't give us or they just give us little money or something like that, it will not be enough even for our transportation. I think we are, we are, we are, we are um, charging for that gift is not our own. It's God that gives us the voice, you know, that we should use it to minister and having faith that, you know, whatever may be a uh, cause us to come there, God himself will reward us. So um, that is like um, you, you're charging, you are merchandising the gift of God and not wanting to use it because you think, oh, it should, it should, it should give me monetary value. So in that aspect, even some minister as well, even to preach the gospel, to preach the gospel, they invited to a small church. They don't want to go there. And they only they won't have a, they won't have a lot a, a enough contribution, something like that. So they can use it selfishly. Even a midst of us, you are you are gifted in um uh, one area or the other. Maybe uh, even the gift that we use in the world. I'm an accountant and this and that. If you start charging exorbitantly for your brethren, then you know, you know, it can be used selfishly because you just want your own post to be full. So God will help us in Jesus' name. And leave for other people to also contribute. Thank you, Ma. God bless you. Uh, we have um, Sister Lee raising up her hands. I think she wants to contribute yes. to the question. Yes. Over to you. In the area of money, also, oh yeah, in the our our possession, like what we have. If you have some things, you need to be able to share with others, not for yourself alone. If you are blessed monetarily, if you need to give, if you need, if people that need some things, you can extend your hands to them. So in that area also, we should not use whatever we have for ourselves. Our money we have is not for ourselves. Whatever we have is not for ourselves. Our vehicle, our house is not for ourselves. It's for others also. So if you that, that's all those ones. God has not given us, God has blessed us to be a blessing to others. With whatever we have. Okay, Ma, thank you so much. Um, There is a comment on the chat that says, um, are you saying we should stop paying people that we invite to church? <laughs> Are you saying we should stop paying people that we invite to church? Praise the Lord. Can I just Hallelujah. agree with that? Okay, I'm not saying we should not pay. It's, it's like before someone leave home or before you even come at all to be charging. That's what I'm saying. For appreciating one's gift and for the fact that they come, no, we can pay them. But if the person has to say, oh, you have to pay me uh, 5000 5, before I leave my house, before I even come at all. You understand? The, you know, I've, I've heard people like that. So I'm not saying we should not, we will appreciate, <clears throat> excuse me, we should appreciate their gift and for the fact that they take their time to come and knowing that, you know, maybe the ministry is what they used to eat. Is what they that is the only thing they they do, and they have family as well as you know, um, things that they do as well. So we can uh, stretch for the hand of uh, generosity to them, but not that they now tell us I will not be there until so 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 amount of money is paid to my I can't be bought. I even never leave them. That's what I'm saying. That they they, they are using that uh, the give now to. Uh, uh, putting price on it, uh, you know, that's so. I'm not saying that we should not pay people, but it's not really payment. It's appreciating the gift. They're not that they are charging us as if we want to go and buy something in Sainsbury, and then we have to see what we 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 want to buy first. That's um, that means you are now putting the gift in your own in convenience to charge whatever you want. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Ma, for that response. Uh, we also have Elder Oladeji raising up his hand. Over to you. Can Elder Oladeji be unmuted, please? 
Neydi ya? Can media please unmute Elder Oladeji? He wants to contribute to the question. He should be able to unmute himself. <laughs> okay. Hello. Okay. Hello, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh, uh, my, uh, my observation has almost been answered by the sister Dekoya's last remark because we have people who are professional in these areas and they also put a lot of cost into their operation. And there will not be like people like uh, Sister Evangelist Bolare, dear Fashioni, and all those star singers. They take they make a lot of input into the operation, and just like the ministries put in first, so also the and now the churches are recognizing that very very seriously and making adequate remuneration towards them. Why we must use our talent? For God, we must also know the, the Bible says those who live by the who walk by the cross have a right to live by the cross. So that is an important thing, and it's different from charity. There are charitable organizations, there are churches like um, Catholic, the Roman Catholic churches, all those uh, big big churches. They have hospitals, they have schools. They charge money for them. You don't just give them for charity. Of course, along the line, they have programs for scholarship and. Aid to less privileged in the society, but clearly those things must be recognized, and there is no sentiment about it. Even Jesus also said something about it. It is allowed that those who walk by the cross have a right to live by the cross. Thank you. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Um, uh, we've got Elder T. So maybe after all doubt his response to this question, maybe we move to another question so we'll have time to answer other questions. Over to you, sir, L -L T. Yes, so ma'am. Maybe... I think the question is uh, 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 when uh, my my little contribution is when we <laughs> assume that the gift that God has given to us is just for us or not meeting the needs of others because the question was how. Uh, so that's my contribution. Yes. And uh, example of that, people, I mean, we have divided of gifts. So people are given the gift of prayer. Even if it's the gift of prayer that you have, only just the gift of prayer alone, and you believe, okay, it's for you, instead of meeting the needs of others. That's that's one of the examples. That's how, that's how one could be selfish in the uh, in the gift that will be gracefully, gracefully given. Because that's what we do not understand, that even this gift is just by grace. It's just that you are entitled to it. And that's why people lose their gifts that God has given to them. When they are being selfish with it, then you, are, you may lose that gift. That you, so that's why um, the time will come up. You've not, you'll be seeing vision you can't see it anymore. You'll be interpreting, you'll be interpreting dreams you cannot do that anymore because you'll be selfish with it. So that is one, that, those are the kind of, do you, do you even know, do you even know that? Well, I don't know, but it depends on the way we look at it. Do you even know if gossip is a gift? If 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 you if you if you if you add Holy Spirit to it, you use it for the evangelism. The same way we gossip about ourselves in the church, left and right. Just add a, just ask for the Holy Spirit without gossiping that belief that you've got. It becomes evangelism. And God will help us in, in Jesus' name. I don't know where you go to look at that, but that is the truth. A lot of us we, we know everything that goes on in one family to the other in the, in the church. That's it, and that's what we gossip. The same way we bring that, that enthusiasm that we have, if we ask Holy Spirit with it, we can use it for evangelism. Then you can start gossiping about Jesus. God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for that. That's a new one for me. Gossip is a gift. Well, if it's being used positively, why not? If not, <laughs> thank you, sir, for that contribution. So I'll just read what we've got on the um, chat, which says, um, we, by, uh, we are not paying them, but give them something as gifts, and that um, the gift of God cannot be bought. Um, so... We have another question on the chat, but before I go to that one, I'd like to ask if there's anyone here who's got a question to ask before I go to the other question on the chat, please. 
Any other questions from anyone? Um, if not, I'll quickly go back to the chat, which says, um, from lesson 13, are there ways gifts can be used that won't be pleasing or acceptable to God? If yes, how? I'll repeat that. Are there ways gifts can be used that won't be pleasing or acceptable to God? If yes, how? Hmm. That's strong. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um we we say in the life for uh, in the uh, parable of the talents, we say that God give one one. And he went and dig it, dig uh, it on the ground and said, um, because he was afraid he would lose a head. So and Jesus Christ rebuke the person that even take from the one that he gave him and give to the one that has tender that has produced with the gift. So if we are given a gift and we don't use it, even at, at in our, 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 our jobs, they said if, if they train you for something and you're not using it, you lose it. You lose that ability. You know, if you are giving a gift to prophesy and you don't use the gift to pray, you don't use the gift, then you will lose it. To so think you are timid, you know, you, you will lose anything that, you know, you're not using for the glory of God because you, your gift was given to you for his glory. And if we, if we go and say because we are shy and dig, if we don't use it, it's like you dig the, uh, uh, the, the ground and dig, you, you keep it there. That's what we're doing. And that is not pleasing. It's not pleasing to God that every gift that has given us, we are not using it. Praise God. Amen. Um, thank you, Ma. Thanks for that contribution. I also like to add to um that uh, question by saying, if you're also proud with your gift, I like using it to show off. You know, being proud with it, trying to show off, trying to be big with it, then. It will be pleasing to God. You have to have that spirit of humility with whatever gift God has given to you. God bless us all. I'll, also, I'll now call, um, we've got several hands raised up. I don't know who raised up first, but I'll call on um, Elder Oladeji first, then Elder um, Oti to follow. Over to you, sir, Elder Oladeji, in answering that question. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise uh, yeah, I just want to say, you, you have struck it also, if we don't use our gift in a way to please God. For those of us who listen to the open level, Baba Adeboye was talking today about um, the event in the number chapter 14, I think, where Moses was asked to speak to the rock to bring water for the Israelites. And uh, instead of speaking to the rock, even if he had beaten the rock, maybe he would have been forgiven. But he first of all went to confront. After kneeling before God and crying, he and Aaron were crying before God, and God said, okay, please stand up, and I will show them that I'm still with you. Speak to that rock and give them water. He went back to the people and said, you rebels, do you want us to give you water now? As if it was his own power. And he went and struck the rock twice. Instead of talking to it, God said, okay, enough. So it was your power that so many people were gifted, either for dream or something. They turned it to their own something. I, I want to do miracle now. I want to do this. Also, those who profit by their um, gift, they, they can pray to water and it will heal. They can lay hand it will. But they are, after some time, they become puffed off. I think they are the ones doing it by themselves. Some will even charge. There are churches charging money now. So gift, like Ed out he said the other time, if you are not using your gift to please God, it can be withdrawn. That's what Jesus said in John 15. I'm divine, and my father is the owner. And any branch in me that does not, those that use their own talent, which is for the edification of the church, and helping the deity, God will nourish them, and they bear more fruit. And the Baba said, yes, I, I'm sorry for keeping long, that uh, some people say, God say, if God withdraws me from me now, I become little. I about say, ah, little? If God withdraws from me, I become nothing. So without God, we are nothing. Whatever gift, we must use it to glorify God and not see ourselves as the one. Well, of course, we are anointed one more than the other. There is no doubt about that. 
but humility is important. Thank you, ma. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir, for that response. Um, Elder, I'll see you. Over to you, sir. Yes, my what I wanted to say is, well, I mean, you've already said it actually. Because pride, pride is um, pride, pride. A lot of people they are they have this gift, but then to express that gift, they they use pride. So and uh, God hates pride. God God hates pride, and uh, whatever that you do with pride would definitely will not go down with God. But then I would just, I didn't put down my hand because I would just uh, I just said, okay, I should add something to that. Uh, because um, what I wanted to say was pride, but you've mentioned it. But then anything, if the gift, if you are not, if you are not expressing that gift in the in the way, because don't forget the, top, uh, the, the topic is so, I mean, of the gift is to edify the body of Christ. So anything, anything that will not edify the body of Christ, anything, if you are too worldly with the gift, if you take if you take the world as priority <laughs> with your gift over the over over the uh, kingdom of God, definitely you will not go down well with God. So the pride is there. Then if you if you take what if you let the world become priority with your gift, definitely it will not go down well with God. It will not be acceptable. Amen. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. I noticed that most of our questions are on the first lesson, lesson 13, and we've got like roughly just two minutes left. If there is any question on the second lesson of the day, combating um, false soup and dark powers. Um, if we've got I, any questions. I have, a question. I have a question, ma. Uh, Only less than two minutes, ma. Yeah, if you yeah, and H, how can we... The, uh, how can we uh, uncover and dismantle um, falsehood um, in the church or, you know, with the minist ministers? Some minister, you know, when they come to, you know, when they come to church, you know, uh, in the honor of, as a minister, you know, they want to grab their bag, grab their everything. Or some people even stand up because they are talking. They will stand up without sitting on, uh, when they are their side. So like that. is that kind of well, I want to know if that kind of uh, attitude or behavior is it in honor of the ministers or and also how can we uh, um, design how can we design falsehood and combat it in the church? If anyone can answer okay. that, I think we have, or oh, Sister Ajayaya, what you mean? Okay, because of, um, I would have rather people answered first, um, but just because of our time. I think to combat that, we all, one of the things we've said is discerning spirit. Is discerning spirit. Is whatever that minister doing, is this according to the way of God? And God has given all of us that discerning spirit. It's whether we're listening to it or not. If it doesn't glorify God, if it doesn't edify the word of God or the body of Christ, then personally, I will say, do that that glorifies God. The fact that everybody is doing it doesn't mean you have to do it because you will please man and displease God. And our focus is on Christ, not on man. So there are so many things, so many examples going on out there today that you and I know is not biblical. People eating grass because the pastor says it's grass. Pastor standing on people is all on biblical. So I would say stay on the lane Christ has put you. Come out from among them. Look for a Bible believing church and God help us all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Thank you so much, man. God bless you and to both of our speakers, Sister Dikoya and Sister Yolua. Ah, Sister Yolua. <laughs> Sister Jala, <laughs> God bless you both. Uh, Money feeling of his word, more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in Jesus' name. Hmm. Two powerful topics, meaningful service and ministry and combating falsehood and dark power. Ooh. I'm surprised both topics were merged together because they are in-depth and um, there is a lot but anyway, we thank God because both of you have handled it very well and key points were um, touch, which I think we all take home and reflect and meditate over it in Jesus' name. Now it's time for prayer. 
let's go to God and let's thank him because he has given us to be at his feet today and learn these valuable lessons in his midst. Father, Lord, we thank you. Let us go to the Lord. Let us just thank him because it is a great privilege. It is a great opportunity for us to learn at his feet together as a fold. Therefore, Father Lord, we thank you. We thank you, O Lord, we worship you. We know you are God and we know you are in our midst. And you have shown us, as you always do, that your Holy Spirit dwell among us, dwell in us. Father Lord, we say thank you, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father Lord, your word said you in, in Ephesians 4, 11 to 12, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, some teachers. His purpose was to equip God's people for the work of serving. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Father Lord, may your purpose in our life as workers may it be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Your purpose in our life, either you are choir, either you are a teacher, either you are an usher, either you are a pastor, either you are security, either you are a children teacher, whatever you are, Father Lord, whatever you have given to us to do, O oh Lord, may that purpose, may it be fulfilled in Jesus' name. May we be fruitful in our service to you, O oh Lord, into our in our service to each other, into our service to mankind, into the community and the church. May it be fulfilled in Jesus' name. When we were going through the um the prayer for each week is not only within the church. They said we should we, we should serve, we should show service to strangers, we should show service in our home, we should show service to prisoners, we should show service to communities. That means it's not just within the church, Father Lord. This purpose you have given to us, may it reflect anywhere we are in Jesus' name. May we be a good role model of this workmanship in Jesus' name. May we serve you the way that you will say ah in your Bible, it says carbomo. That means you welcome us in that. Thank you for doing the work that you are giving to us. Father Lord, may your purpose, may it be fulfilled in our life in Jesus' name as good workmanship. Father Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, and we worship you, Father Lord. Father Lord, we now call upon you again. Let us go to the Lord and ask, Father Lord, the qualities as our teachers has taught us. These qualities, Father Lord, give it to us, Father Lord, so that this purpose will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. And I, and I while, while our teacher was teaching us, I looked at everything and I said, the most important thing there is love. When you love God, you will want to serve him the way he wants to be served. When you love, he said, love, the, which is the first commandment that you should love your God with all your heart, with your mouth, and then love your neighbor as yourself. So Father Lord, that spirit of Lord, let it be imbibed in us in Jesus' name, so that when we love you, we will serve you diligently in everything we are doing. When we love our neighbor, we will empathize with them. We will put ourselves in their shoes and we want to do one thing that is acceptable to you, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. That spirit of love, O oh Lord, give it to us oh, to love you, to serve you, to love our neighbors, to love strangers like the Good Samaritan. His service, that Good Samaritan, his service to that man that was beaten on the road, it, it was acceptable. And that was why Jesus used him as an example. It doesn't have to do be people we know alone. It doesn't have to be people in the church alone. Father Lord, let our service be accepted through the love of God in our life in Jesus' name. Also, oh Lord, we call upon you again. The spirit of humility. Look at the question that was asked. If you are proud, then you are serving yourself. You're not serving God. Father, Lord, let us be selfless in our service to you in Jesus' name. Don't let us be selfish. Don't let that spirit of pride come into you. Father, Lord, let us be humble. Let that spirit of humility that we know. Look at Jesus. He, he, he is king where he came from, which is heaven. And he humbled himself. He served, he washed the, the, the feet of the disciples. And he was even telling them that he came to serve. Therefore, anyone who wants to follow Jesus must also serve. He, he doesn't take away his glory from his head. He doesn't take away whatever God has given to us. But 
when you when you when you humble yourself god will raise you up father lord that spirit of humility give it to us in the mighty name of jesus the spirit to empathize with each other the fear of god when you fear God, you will serve him diligently, Father Lord. Let that fear of God, let it reign in our, our life in Jesus' name. Ability, power, spirit, and commitment, committed to serve you the way you're needed to be served. Father Lord, give it to us in Jesus' name. Father Lord, help us, O Lord, in everything we are doing in Jesus' name. And the gift that you have given to us, Father Lord, let us use it meaningfully in the mighty name of God. Let us use it substantially in the life of God. Let us use it in the way that your name will be glorified in the mighty name of God. The church will be glorified in the mighty name of God. Even people will see the way we are serving you and they say ah that god we are serving they also want to join us our service will evangelize to the people in the dark world in the mighty name of god father lord we thank you we glorify your holy name we worship you oh lord in jesus name we pray now i go to the next um the next um, um um lesson we dealt with which is combating falsehood and dark powers hmm. they said and the god of peace will crush satan under your feet shortly the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you i thank god for where my sister started with this um particular uh, she said when and uh, the sin in the garden of eden god said it himself that um um Satan will bruise his heel, but Jesus will crush his and uh, Satan's head. That means Satan is already is already a defeated foe in our life. Let us thank the Lord because Satan is already a defeated foe. Father Lord, we thank you because Satan and the kingdom of darkness is already a defeated foe. Father Lord, Father Lord, we now call upon give us the realization to know that Satan is a defeated foe and. All what we need now is these qualities, is this characteristic to deal with Satan and the kingdom of darkness in the mighty name of God. According to what our sister has told us, Father Lord, we need your power. Fill us with your power, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. The power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit that will make Satan see us and say, that will make us know when there is heresy, there is falsehood, there is lies. Father Lord, give it to us in Jesus' name. The power of the Holy Spirit to listen according to the way our teacher has taught us to listen and obey. There is a there is a one to listen and there is another thing to obey. When the Holy Spirit tells us to do certain things, we will not only hear and listen, we will obey what the Holy Spirit told us and we will do accordingly in the mighty name of Jesus. Paul did the same and he overcome Satan. Peter, the disciples of the, of the of their old age, they, dis, they did the same and they overcome Satan. We are the disciples of the day, Father Lord. The power to overcome Satan in in every area of our life, Father Lord, give it to us in the name of God. Give us the boldness, O oh Lord, the boldness to confront the power of darkness in the mind. Same of as Paul and Silas did, they gave, they had the boldness. They were brave and they praised and sing. Even in the midst of persecution, they were still bold and they overcame all the, the falsehood of Satan. Satan can only back. He can't bite if you have the power of God in you. Father Lord, give us that power to move ahead, to be bold, to be brave in the mighty name of God. Also, Lord, we ask for discerning spirit. Mm. It is a gift that we need, oh Lord. Give it to each one of us in the mighty name of God so that we'll be able to detect heresy from afar in the mighty mother, so that we'll be able to detect falsehood from afar in the mighty mother. So that the spirit of the Son, give it to us in the mighty name of God. Help us, O Lord, with all these gifts that our teachers have mentioned, so that Lord, we ask for it in our lives individually and in the church of God and in the Christendom to combat Satan and the kingdom of darkness. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. I will now hand over to our um, superintendent of um, Sunday School, Evangelist Ebenezer Daramala. Over to you, sir. Um, thank you very much, Ma. Um, and good evening, everyone. Um, first and foremost, we want to thank uh, 
um, her reviewers, her teachers for tonight, um, our sister Jimoke and our evangelist um, Ajala for doing just um, beautifully well in dissecting those two um, lessons. Um, we bless God. Um, so we've done, we've, we've looked at um, lesson 13, meaningful service and ministry. And then um, lesson 14, combating falsehood and dark um, powers. Um, I want to believe that we've all picked up um, all the necessary um, points that we need to take to our various classes on Sunday. Um, by the special grace of God, <clears throat> our individual classes would resume this Sunday after um, some lengthy pause through to, um, due to the 40 days of um, fasting and prayer. So every lead teacher in each of the classes, please ensure that someone is assigned to teach your class. Um, if there's any class that hasn't got any teacher, please let us know so that we can make arrangements for such um, class to be taught on Sunday. Um, please, um, um, let's please um, kindly give our offering tonight um, to the Sunday School account, and the Lord would bless us as we do so in the mighty name of um, Jesus. Um, like I said, um, on we've only got 25 minutes to teach each of these lessons on Sunday. Let's make very good use of them. Let's uh, make it interactive for our students. Um, let's give them opportunity to ask questions because you can see even all teachers, the kind of questions that we would have to tackle um, on this forum. Um, so you would expect more from our students. But if we don't give them the opportunity to, um, they will be losing out. And we don't want our students, um, our learners to lose out. We want to create that opportunities for them. Please, as much as it's possible, even if it is five minutes, um, allow for questions and also in the teaching, make it interactive, make it participatory, right? So that um, everyone can benefit. And I pray that the Lord will bless and help us in the mighty um, name of Jesus, right? So um, for, for the next week, um, Sundays, it's definitely going to be individual classes. We would only be having our one class when it is um um the first Sunday, the Holy Communion Sunday, because on that Sunday we would normally have um which is also Family Sunday, we normally have twenty minutes for Sunday school, so it's um it's just um only prudent that we um we can allow for um for one class to hold so that um, we'll have enough time to go through the um to lessons. God help us in Jesus' name. Um, so our announcement for the week, please let's remember on Saturday, by the special grace of God, um, is our mommy um um 78th birthday um in church. Please let's um let's come to celebrate with her, and the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Tomorrow is Friday, is the SDCC prayer night VG. Um, it starts at 11 p.m. to 12.30. Please, let's um, ensure to join. It is online, so it is virtual. So you are the comfort of your home, joining the VG. God help us in Jesus' name. Um, Mama Ayodeji's 78th birthday is 12 p.m. on Saturday in church. Uh, please, let's um, take notes. And on Sunday is our third resurrection praise Sunday. Um, please, let's come prepared as we celebrate and also don't forget um the um the darlings night ticket is still available for sale um the lord help us in the mighty name of jesus if there are other announcements we will let us know via the appropriate medium god help us i mean god bless us for coming in jesus name thank you everyone also our moderator for tonight um dickiness Eriolua. thanks so very much for moderating so very well god will bless you and uphold you in the mighty name of Jesus. For brother Tolu, who led us in the praise and worship, thank you very much. God will continue to uphold each and every one of us. Amen. Over to you, Ma. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Um, uh, it's now time for closing prayer and benediction. Um, I don't know whether Pastor... Asho Show is in our midst. I'm just checking through. Um, 
not sure if he's here. If he's not here, um, I know we have um, Pastor Ajala and um, Pastor Guntade, whoever is going to take over and do the closing. Um, I think I think that your good is online. Okay, okay. So I would like to humbly call on Baba Guntade to please do the closing benediction and prayer for us. Over to you, sir. Oh, Lord, our God, we thank you. Okay. I want to appreciate you for this privilege again. I want to thank you for the men and women of God you have used so powerfully tonight. I want to thank you for our dear brother that uh, led us in praise and worship. I want to thank you for our mommy, uh, and the Yonua, that's anchored the program so, so powerfully. I want to thank you for the two teachers tonight. Thank you for uh, the way they taught us uh, so uh, inspiringly, uh, Mommy Ajala and uh, our sister, uh, uh, that made, uh, the first uh, prayers in, in the first uh, uh, teaching. Uh, we ask that God will continue to empower them and enrich them in the name of Jesus. Uh, I want to thank you for everyone that's contributed, that asked questions, uh, and have answered uh, questions. I want to thank you for. Our leaders, uh, the Sunday school spring, and uh, all the uh, officers that are supporting him. We ask for God for uh, greater initiatives and creativity, uh, for inspirations uh, to move the Sunday school and the Christian education department uh, forward for you, God, in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We pray for as many as uh, being part of this program tonight. Uh, that the blessings of God will rest upon each and every of the all of us in the name of Jesus. Anointing to serve profitably will rest upon us in the name of Jesus. That Amen. He will silence every falsehood uh, uh, that that is uh, attacking the work of God and the ministry, even at this time. Uh, in the name of Jesus, expose all a uh, falsehood in the midst of your people. In the name of Jesus, those men and women that have derailed, uh, we ask that the power of God will restore them. Uh, mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, uh, mm -hmm. we pray for as many as uh, in the Sunday school uh, meeting tonight, mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit uh, we meet everyone at the points of their needs. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we mm -hmm. commit the rest of the week to your hand. Uh, you will honor yourself in all our program, especially mm -hmm. on Sunday. As we mm -hmm. come for the celebration uh, Sunday, Holy Spirit, uh, that you make yourself manifest in our midst, uh, in mm -hmm. the mighty name of Jesus, as mm -hmm. many as you are prepared uh, to well. minister in various ways uh, throughout uh, the uh, program on Sunday, that there be fresh anointing upon their lives, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, that let there be healing, let there be manifestation of your power and your presence in our services, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Lord, we thank you. We appreciate you. We pray, O oh Lord, for our pastor, that you will grant him safe and secure journey that and, su and success in whatever he has gone to do in the name of Jesus. We pray for all our leaders, all our pastors, all our workers, and you continue to empower us, Lord, to be more productive for you in the vineyard, in the name of Jesus. Release fresh anointing upon our lives. Our Lord, we thank you. Our God will bless your name, for in Jesus' name we are prayed. And so the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Rest and abide on us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Jesus. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, well done, uh, Mommy Ajala. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank, thank you, everyone. You. God bless you. Jesus. Mm. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you too, Sister Jumeke. Amen. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. Sister, yeah, 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 yeah. God bless you, sis. Small anointing. Yes, ma.